Exploring Fossils and the Fossil Record. This is a level seven course. This course teaches you all about fossils and how they help us see what life was like millions of years ago. You'll learn how scientists dig up fossils in the field, and then you'll get to go on your very own fossil dig to discover some of your own fossils. Click the next button to begin your adventure. Welcome to the map of your quest. Your goal is to discover the fossils in the Valley of Kundar. This valley holds the climates of the desert, the Arctic, the plains, and the mountains. Before you begin digging up your finds, you must learn about fossils in the Hall of Knowledge and then learn about your gear in base camp. Each area will open to you as you complete your tasks. Let's go! Millions of years ago, the Earth had many different plants and animals, just like it does today. However, some of those plants and animals looked very different from the ones you and I are familiar with. But how do we know this if we weren't also living millions of years ago? We know this because of something called the fossil record. Fossils are the remains of plants and animals that once lived on Earth. When plants and animals die, their remains are sometimes buried in the ground by the elements and preserved. Sometimes, their remains are preserved for millions of years. Because of this, scientists living today can dig up these fossils and study them. If a particular area has a lot of fossils, scientists will have a good record of what life looked like at different times in the past. Scientists who search for and study fossils are called paleontologists. The word paleontologist comes from two smaller words, paleo, meaning ancient or old, and ontology, meaning the study of existence. A paleontologist, then, is a person who studies things from the ancient world. Now that you've learned about fossils, you can now head toward base camp to learn about the gear you'll take into the field. Welcome to Base Camp. Here, you'll learn about the tools needed to find your fossils. Finding fossils is sometimes hard work. Many fossils are inside rocks or deep underground. Because of this, paleontologists need special tools to dig them up and study them. To learn more about the tools paleontologists use, click and drag each of the tools you see at the left of the screen over to the tree stump. Notebook. Just like all scientists, paleontologists need to keep detailed records of what they find and where they find it. The easiest way to do that is to write it down in a notebook. Map and compass. Because many fossils are found out in the wilderness, far from the city, Paleontologists sometimes require maps and compasses to hike there. Once they find a site with fossils, they mark it down on their map to make it easy to find again. Magnifying lens. Some fossils are very small and hard to see. Paleontologists use powerful magnifying lenses in the field to help them analyze what they find. Back in the laboratory, they may even use special microscopes. Soft bristle brush. Sometimes fossils have lots of delicate little parts. Once paleontologists find a fossil and chip away the excess rock, they use soft brushes to gently remove excess dirt, debris, and dust. 
hammer. Paleontologists use special hammers to chip into rocks that contain fossils. These hammers are similar to hammers used to hit nails, but they have a sharp, flat edge designed specially for rocks and dirt. Chisel. When paleontologists find a rock they think contains a fossil, they use chisels to carefully chip away everything around it. Shovel. Paleontologists use shovels to dig for fossils when they are deep underground. To ensure they don't miss something important, they'll also carefully study all the soil and dirt they remove. Now that you've learned about the tools paleontologists use to dig up fossils, click the back button to return to the main menu. You've made it! Welcome to the Valley of Kundar. Like the rest of the world, the valley has all different kinds of environments for you to make discoveries. You can find fossils in the desert, in the mountains, in the plains, and in the Arctic. Because the earth and the valley looked very different millions of years ago, it's sometimes possible to find fossils in strange places. For example, you can sometimes find fish fossils in the desert, far from the ocean, or plant fossils in the Arctic, where nothing at all grows. You may even have fossils in your own backyard. Now that you know a little bit about what fossils are and the tools that are used to study them, let's dig up some of our own. Click each of the environments to explore the types of fossils you can find there. When you're finished exploring all of the environments, click the back button to return to the main menu. Desert. Deserts are a good place to find fossils because they're dry, and dry environments help preserve fossils. Click each of the areas a paleontologist has marked with X's. These are sites she thinks might contain fossils. When you're finished, click the back button to choose a different environment. Coelophysis. Wow, we got really lucky with this find. Come look at this. This is called Coelophysis, a small, very fast dinosaur that lived around 220 million years ago before they went extinct. Coelophysis had hollow bones in its legs, which made it a very fast runner. Brachiopod. This is an interesting find. This is called a brachiopod. Brachiopods still exist in nature today and are similar to modern day clams. The oldest brachiopod fossil ever found was 550 million years old. That's a long time to be buried in the ground. Nautiloid. Here's an interesting find. This is called a nautiloid. Nautiloids are kind of like squid, except they have a large outer shell, which is what you see preserved here. Paleontologists have discovered more than 2,500 different types of nautiloids, but only a few are still living on Earth today. My first guess is that this fossil is more than 250 million years old. Nice work! Click the return button to explore the rest of the valley. Plains. You can find many fossils in the plains and grasslands. Let's see what fossils you can help find. Click each of the areas the paleontologist has marked with X's. These are sites she thinks might contain fossils. When you're finished, click the back button to choose a different environment. Pharaeotis testis. This is a fossil of a fish called Pharaeotis testis. This fish lived 50 million years ago and is known for its large teeth and its huge appetite. This is a really good specimen. You can see that a lot of the fish was preserved. This rarely happens.
ammonite. Ah, uh, yes. This looks like an ammonite fossil. Although ammonites have shells, which you can see here, they're related to octopus and squid. Ammonites lived about 65 million years ago. That means the remains of this ammonite have been buried here for 65 million years. Good find. Sassafras leaf. This is a fossil of a leaf from a sassafras tree that probably lived about 35 million years ago. This is a really good sample. You're doing great for your first dig. If you look closely, you can see the individual leaves. Nice work! Click the return button to explore the rest of the valley. Mountains. It's possible to find many different types of fossils in the mountains. Because they're so steep, it's sometimes possible to find fossils very close to the surface without having to do very much digging at all. Click the areas the paleontologist has marked with X's. These are sites she thinks might contain fossils. When you're finished, click the back button to choose a different environment. Archifructus sinensis. Wow, this is a very good find. This is one of the oldest known flowering plants. You can see almost all of its parts. It's called Archifructus sinensis, and it's probably more than 125 million years old. This plant had small fruits and grew in swampy regions near modern-day China. Xyphactinus, a great find. This is a fossil of a large fish called Xyphactinus, which is related to the modern-day tarpon. Xyphactinus could grow up to 18 feet long and was one of the largest fish that lived around 70 million years ago. This is a very good specimen. Echinoderm. Look at this fossil. This is called an echinoderm. Echinoderms are related to modern-day sand dollars and starfish. I'm not sure how old this particular fossil is, but other scientists have found similar fossils that are as old as 560 million years. Nice work! Click the return button to explore the rest of the valley. Arctic. Even though there's usually a lot of snow and ice, you can still find fossils in the Arctic regions. Sometimes what you find is very surprising. Click the areas the paleontologist has marked with X's. These are sites she thinks might contain fossils. When you're finished, click the back button to choose a different environment. Mammothus primigenius, woolly mammoth. Ah, uh, yes. This is an interesting fossil. It looks like the jawbone from an animal called Mammothus primigenius. These animals looked a lot like elephants, but they had a long, thick coat of hair. In fact, you may know this animal by its more common name, woolly mammoth. Woolly mammoths lived until about 9,000 years ago. Once upon a time, humans hunted mammoths for food. a really common fossil. This is called a trilobite. Trilobites were odd-looking, insect-like animals that lived in shallow water in the ocean. Trilobites are very old. They first appeared 600 million years ago, which is a very long time. Trilobites are the first creatures on Earth to develop eyes. Smilodon, saber-toothed tiger. 
This is a really exciting discovery. This is a Smilodon, more commonly known as a saber-toothed tiger. You can see two large teeth in this fossil. What is amazing about the Smilodon is that humans and Smilodons once shared the planet together. These scary-looking cats went extinct only about 11,000 years ago, which is not very long when it comes to the history of the Earth. Great work! You've completed your expedition. Click the return button.